This aquaponics facility was erected in 2012 and has been running for the past eight years as a commercial entity. We run training courses on this facility and more recently we have put our training material into video format and self-study format so that people can access it via the internet and do their studies at home without having to travel to South Africa and to Grahamstown to come and experience working on the system. Just to give you a quick tour so that you can see what is involved in the system, it starts off with four fish tanks. We use Mozambique tilapia, they're a highly suitable species of fish that do very well in aquaponics. This particular tank you can see has got about 1,800 fish in. These are our smallest size and as we harvest the larger size, we move 600 of these fish into each of these larger tanks. These are 4,200 liter tanks. So the four fish tanks, each fish tank, the other two fish tanks are at the back behind these large tanks. There you can see the other two fish tanks. Um, these two large tanks have got breeders in, uh, breeder tilapia. We installed them fairly recently. At each fish tank is a unique pump that draws water from a pipe that goes down to the central floor of the tank. It pumps the water to the grow beds. And there you can see at each grow bed there is a riser pipe that takes the water into the grow bed. It flows in continuously flows through the stones and we have a typical bell siphon flood and drain cycle to ensure that there's plenty of oxygen within the stones for the plant roots and the bacteria. Here you can see a nursery area where we do our seeding, we use potting soil, there's a whole chapter on this. Every two weeks we plant a new tray of seedlings, this is lettuce seedlings, here are 60 cucumber vines that have just been planted. These are lettuce seeds. Every two weeks we plant another tray of lettuce seeds and here is the previous two weeks ago's lettuce seeds that are coming up. You can see the reds on this end are not germinating very well at all but the greens and the rosa are doing very well. We also then have some other unique crops. This is nasturtium. It's not doing particularly well. We've got a very low fertility rate on those and this is a, a, a tray of all sorts there's some celery on the end that hasn't come up yet some borage brindles pansies didn't come up at all and the bright lights have come up fairly well we planted many of them out already yeah you can see the tunnel these are beds that were recently emptied and cleaned these four beds in the front you can see we've planted new cucumbers all along the northern side and you can see we, in this case we've got uh, cauliflower and broccoli in the first three beds and the last bread has got Swiss chard in it. This is uh, Swiss chard. This variety of Swiss chard is called bright lights. They're bright yellow or red. Then these beds are a month or two older. There's a little bit of Swiss chard in the front here. But most of this again is, is broccoli. And further on there is more Swiss chard and some lettuce. On the right hand side we've planted tomatoes and more cucumbers. See the cucumbers on the northern side of the beds in each case. This variety of tomato that we are using here, is, it's a Stark Airs variety known as Goldilocks. It's an incredibly prolific grower and bearer of small golden cherry tomatoes. If you're looking for yellow cherries, I strongly recommend this variety. Uh, notice how thick and healthy the stems are. It's, it's a very, very vigorous grower. And you'll see the tomato, the flower stalks um, also really long healthy stalks with lots of flowers on them we've trialed many different varieties and this one is by far the best in our tunnels here and there you'll see we've planted some marigolds uh, marigolds are not only edible flowers and therefore part of our crop but also marigolds are supposed to discourage pests um, our pests don't realize this and we still have to spray routinely Here's some brindles, young brindle plants. See they haven't been uh, pruned yet. 
one of the tasks in the week coming up is to prune them so that we've got two or three main shoots per plant. More broccolis, we've started harvesting the broccolis and the cucumbers and here is a bed of this is an interesting one, it's a licorice basil. This is a bed of celery, very, very healthy celery. Um, celery does extremely well in aquaponics, especially in winter time. In summer, it's a little bit hot in here, inside the greenhouse, but in winter, it does very well. And then this here is these two beds have got um, some, amongst the broccolis, I planted some zucchini. And here you can see the sashimi is producing prolifically, lots of fruits. And this is the first plant that we planted. You can see how high it has grown. It's almost grown to the top of the trellis already. You can also see the way the rope is pulling down. It's a very heavy plant, uh, full of fruits. Again, needs harvesting this morning. It's early in the day, we haven't harvested them yet. More beds of lettuce and going on down that way more of the same and um, some more older beds lots of basil we grow very large numbers this basil here you can see it's flowering this basil one of the tasks this week these three beds need to be pruned um, basil does well when it's growing in its vigorous life stage not when it's old like this so we'll prune the basil down here's some more broccoli you can see this small fruit this is a multi-stem now there are two ways in which we grow the broccoli in aquaponics. The one is to grow them at a fair space like this, uh, where you've got about six plants per bed. And growing at six plants per bed, you produce beautiful big heads of broccoli, such as you can see here um, and here. Lovely fruits, but some markets prefer to have the broccoli as long stem. And in fact, you generally get about three times the market price with a long stem broccoli. In which case you don't plant six per bed you plant about 16 or so per bed and because they're growing very close together they're all shooting up for the light lots of vigorous vegetative growth uh, resulting in a resulting in your long stem broccoli here you can see we removed the broccoli the other day more mature uh, Cucumbers along this side, you can see by the size of leaves and the paucity of fruit. There are not that many fruits on these uh, cucumbers. These are now old cucumbers. If you come back in two weeks time, they will have been replaced with young ones. And here, let's see if we can see a fruit on this cauliflower yet. There we go. There's a little cauliflower in there. Not quite ready. If we give it a few more days, it'll, it'll grow in size. And then if we look at the last row down here, these are the last beds to have been cleaned once again we've planted the first cucumbers all along the northern side <clears throat> all the way to the end and this is the north side of our tunnel so it's a very hot side so we need to be careful about what we plant here and also we have taken to shade clothing it for summer the shade clothing doesn't help this time of the year because the sun comes through at an angle through the plastic um, but we, we ha obviously have the option of shading that out as well. Here we have some interesting crops. This is wild rocket, which we use purely for the flowers, which is part of our salad pack. Uh, these here are nasturtiums. This particular batch did not uh, germinate well at all. There's only one plant that germinated. I planted them in seed trays and about one in every four seeds is germinating. So we'll do our own seeds here. Nasturtiums are easy going forward. This here is normal rocket which we sowed directly into the bed. It, this again wasn't a very successful, um, wasn't a very successful seeding and we will come and sprinkle more seeds in between to get a reasonable covering of rocket in this bed. This bed we're planting borage which is used purely for its, its flowers. We have two open beds here, opportunity and on this side we have some parsley and again like that celery the parsley does very well in aquaponics and here we have some thyme 
A lot of people say you can't grow thyme in aquaponics because it likes a drier environment. Well, it's time they saw this, isn't it? This is clearly a very happy plant. These plants were seeded on the 12th of the 2nd. So we're talking about, a, it's now the 2nd of August. So we're talking about plants that are only about six weeks old. Um, and I planted them into the bed when they were four weeks after seeding. Here we have various peppers. We have peppers in other beds as well. Uh, these are, there are a few bell peppers here and the rest are paprika. And here we have a bed of coriander. Might be a little bit hot for the coriander on this side of the tunnel, but we'll give it a bash. Something else we grow in our tunnel that does really well is papaya. For the last two years, we've had no papaya in the tunnel, but recently I've planted some more small papaya and here you can see the papaya growing. Um, the papaya do extremely well and we get about a fruit, let, let's say we get about four or five fruits per week. It's not quite a fruit per day per papaya plant, but that certainly does very well when it gets to the kitchen. This here to me is the simplest overflow mechanism you can use for aquaponics. It's got no moving parts. It's very simple. It's very reliable. And there are two major benefits. One of them is that it requires less water flow than any of the other options we've trialed, uh, bell siphons and flouts. And also it enables you to connect multiple beds together. So we've got multiple beds, in this case, three beds connected together via a watertight connection. The siphon pipe simply extends inside here. There's another elbow and that goes down to lower than the height of the beds. So we get a complete draining on the beds and this flood and drain floods and drains very reliably. In the aquaponics tunnel, it is important that you are able to vent the heat of the day out of the tunnel and get rid of the moisture. So what you can see at the end there is a very large vent which is opened as soon as the day warms up. It's now about nine o'clock in the morning, so we haven't yet opened the vent. It's winter time, but you can see that whole portion there will open up. Um, I'll show you the other side of the tunnel. And that allows the heat and the moisture to be vented out of the tunnel during the middle of the day. Even on very cold days, we vent for a minimum of two hours to get rid of the excess moisture. And that significantly reduces the incidences of powdery mildew and other fungal type infections in here. And in fact, we've gone through this winter without spraying for powdery mildew once. We have a little bit of mildew on our cucurbits. Yeah, you can see there's tiny bits of mildew, but not significant at all. Vent on the opposite side of the tunnel, it's open, allowing all the warm air, all the warmest air at the top of the tunnel to vent out to waste. Summary, that is our tunnel once again. The system produces about 50 kilos of herbs, a whole bunch of different vegetables and about 1,500 uh, cucumbers per month as well as about 60 kilos of tilapia.